This week on Morning Mika, more and more women hitting Donald Trump where it hurts and in doing so, stepping up for all of us, costing him tens, possibly hundreds of millions of dollars and maybe even the election. Plus, President Biden's clapbacks are getting really good. We'll show you how the commander in chief is responding to Trump Republicans as they continue to bow down to their cult leader. I'm Mika Brzezinski here with Simone Sanders Townsend and Huma Abedin. Let's start with the women living rent free in Donald Trump's head. And for good reason. Number one on the list. We all know her by now. E. Jean Carroll. Trump called her a liar, a fraud, a whack job who's not my type. That's what he said. Never mind. He actually confused a photo of her with his own ex-wife at the time. It's Marla. You say Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah. That's that's my wife. Which wo woman are you pointing to? No. That's Here. Carol. Oh, is that? The oh, person okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. E. Jean is costing Trump $83.3 million in damages plus bad lawyer fees. Speaking of that, the costly judgment is thanks in part to our number two on the list, another woman, Alina Haba who was roundly criticized for her performance in the New York courtroom. Legal analysts called it minor league and a comedy of bumbling errors. Alina told a podcast last month that it's better to be pretty than smart. Like somebody said to me, Alina, would you rather be, um, would you rather be smart or pretty? And I said, oh, easy, pretty. I can fake being smart. <laughs> Mm, I think she meant pretty costly. Alina, I just want to personally thank you for your contribution to saving democracy. Your shocking level of stupidity in the courtroom came in handy. Next up is Letitia James, New York's attorney general, who is anything but stupid when it comes to holding fraudsters accountable. Donald Trump has called her a lunatic, a swindler, a racist, and shared a social media post calling for a citizen's arrest on her. She is seeking $370 million in her civil case against Trump after Trump was already found liable, thanks to Letitia, for knowingly and intentionally ripping off the state for years. Letitia James exposed Trump's lies, like claiming his 11,000 square foot apartment was 30,000 square feet. He overstated the value of one building by nearly $200 million and inflated the value of Mar-a-Lago on his financial statement by more than 2,000 percent. Trump tends to inflate the size of things, crowds, buildings, you name it. If it's Donald Trump's, it's usually a lot smaller than what he's saying. The decision in that New York case is due any minute now. From the start, Letitia James has held the line. Claiming you have money that you do not have does not amount to the art of the deal. It's the art of the steal. And there cannot be different rules for different people in this country or in this state. And former presidents are no different. And then there's Nikki Haley. She's uh, hanging in the race, as we've mentioned. She's causing Trump. He's going to have to bleed money on the presidential campaign on both attack ads and time of her living rent free in his head. And Donald Trump was totally unhinged, unhinged. He was a bit sensitive. And I think that it. And I think his feelings were hurt, but he threw a temper tantrum out on stage, seriously, threw a total temper tantrum and was talking about revenge. So after he talked about revenge and had a little of something to say about me, that's fine. We raised a million dollars online right after he did that. He hates that stuff. As Nikki noted on social media, he can't beat Joe Biden if he's spending all of his time and money on court cases and chaos. And finally, lest we forget Taylor Swift, even the idea that she might support President Biden has set off a full fledged panic attack for MAGA snowflakes and is further breaking the ex-president's brain. Trump is reportedly telling anyone who will listen that he's more popular than Taylor Swift and that the singer, 
uh, that he has more fans than she does. Think about that. Really, Donald? Have you seen her crowds from the Eras tour? A far cry from Trump's sparsely attended inauguration back in 2017. Plenty of standing room there, although he says it was very large. From Nikki to E. Jean to Letitia, the cost to Trump will come from the very type of person he has the least regard for. Women showing strength, holding him accountable, and hitting him where it hurts the most. His bottom line, whom I think actually E. Jean Carroll finally stopped Trump from defaming her. It seems that he has completely been shut up. By, am I missing something? <laughs> Is this having an impact? Well, we know we know he likes to disrespect and um, and demean women. And frankly, all these women that you just mentioned trying to hold him accountable. And I would put you and I in that category as well. Who has not? Uh, who's been out in public in some way, not been on the receiving end of his ire. And I, I think there's a period of time where there were some of us who weren't sure he would ever be held accountable. And that's why I really applaud E. Jean Carroll for having the courage to do what she did. And she deserves every penny that she was awarded in that defamation, uh, defamation case. And maybe it will uh, perhaps silence him. But I think more than anything to what you just talked about, the two things that will silence him are the loss of power and money. And you refer to the $50 million in that. Those are campaign fees that are going to, and just in 2023, that he's had to spend to defend himself. He's still facing four separate indictments, more than 90 felony counts. These are, there are real consequences that come from that. And I think they're finally deciding that they need to focus on, uh, on, on defending uh, him. And, and, and I, I love the commentary you had about uh, his defense attorney. And the second thing is power. There's a, Recent Bloomberg uh, poll, and this is a, you mm -hmm. know, when things like this come up, I, I imagine his campaign is paying very serious attention to the fact that there, um, the majority of respondents in seven key swing states has said that they won't vote for Trump if he is convicted. That's 46 percent of respondents said they are very unwilling and 7 percent saying that they are somewhat Unwilling. Those are troubling uh, numbers. You know, we we see we know that people who voted for him or supported him in 2016 and 2020, we see that they have retained his support from him. But that's not enough to win. You know, we saw his weaknesses in both the Iowa and the New Hampshire uh, caucus and primaries. And he needs that those independent voters, those swing state uh, voters to win against uh, Joe Biden in November. And I imagine they're now taking this very and seriously. And more poll results like that could be inspiring to Nikki Haley. Simone, Nikki Haley says she's she's going to try and go beyond South Carolina. In, in many different ways, the numbers are stacked against her, the way it's all lined up. So how does she keep her campaign alive? What's her message? What could help, I guess, keep the donors giving? You know, I think polls like the one that Huma just cited is something that everyone is, is looking at. Those are staggering numbers. And I could imagine that it is, you know, putting a little wind at the back of the donors to Nikki Haley to say, see, look, we should keep giving to her because if the bottom falls out where Donald Trump is concerned, she needs to be in a really good position. I think the, the only problem with that is, in fact, the calendar and the delegate math. You need a little over 1,200 delegates to be the Republican nominee. Um, Nikki Haley is not going to get delegates out of Nevada. She could potentially glean delegates from South Carolina, depending on how well she does. But then on Super Tuesday, where the biggest delegate grab is, um, c coming out of California, for example, who is, which is now a winner-take-all state, unless Nikki Haley gets over 51%, in that state particularly, she's not going to get any delegates. And so I, I do think, though, there is value in her continuing to stand up and finally say the things that many people like myself have said for months. Why do you why why not compete? Why not say everything that we can very clearly see with our eyes and we are hearing with our own ears? And now Nikki Haley is saying some of that. I again, I think she's she's playing a long game strategy. Maybe she's not looking to 2024. Maybe she's mm -hmm. looking to 2028, 20, but it remains to be seen. But what I know for sure, Mika, is this: um, your intro and the and the and the, <laughs> and, the and the dots and the needle that you threaded, honey. Mm -hmm, Chef's mm -hmm. kiss. Chef's mm -hmm, kiss. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, meanwhile, the Biden clapback is getting so good. His campaign's rapid response is on fire, and the president himself is naming names. 
The only loser I see is Donald Trump. As the New York Times reports, when Biden took a fundraising swing through Southern California in December, the campaign carved out time to meet with influencers to pitch, pitch them on posting pro-Biden content. There are also plans to hold a fundraiser with former presidents Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. Some, Simone, is there any way that they should be hitting harder? It seems like they're firing on all cylinders now. Yeah, I mean, this is, frankly, you know, a lot of people out there, Mika, say, oh, the Democrats and, and Joe Biden, they've been talking too much about Donald Trump. And the opposite is true if you actually have listened to things that President Biden has been saying. I think it's good that he is naming names and calling out Trump to his face. You know, the not just the right-wing media ecosystem, but some Democratic voters will say, oh, I really like President Biden, but I don't, he seems, is he too old? Has he lost a step? And so him going going out and going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, as I like to say, uh, with Donald Trump and and calling out the things and being proactive and a little aggressive on the campaign trail is something very important for voters to see. And it cuts right against this idea that uh, the president is not up for this fight. I love it when Joe Biden, Huma, talks about the importance of protecting our democracy, and he's dead serious when he's doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would also think at this point in the game, humor is a great ap approach as well when it comes to, because there's so much material with Donald Trump. Absolutely. And I, you know, some of us have a little experience uh, running yeah. against Donald Trump. And the reality is when President Biden says he's a loser, it's not a name calling. It's a fact. He right. lost to Joe mm -hmm. Biden in 2020. And I think it's important for the White House, for the administration, rather, and the campaign to be reminding people that he did win, drawing those contrasts. I love that he did a fundraiser in Florida and, you know, went straight, not just anywhere in Florida, but he went to South Florida, where, you know, Donald Trump is a resident, and said Florida is still in play. Now, that remains to be seen, obviously. November is a long way away. But all of these things, you know, going in, collecting the cash, reminding people the economy's strong, not taking any of the sort of the attacks and not responding. They're they're I think they're firing on all cylinders. I think they're doing a great job and they're they're running like they're losing and they should run like they're losing.